I first heard that Microsoft was going to get in the video game business, it was pretty much like uh, the same thought I had when I first heard Sony was going to get in the video game business. I was like, oh, what do those guys know about video games? I figured I, it wasn't really that interesting to me, to be perfectly honest, because I already had my Nintendo, I already had my PlayStation. Well, Microsoft isn't the name that you would usually associate with video games. You know, they make Windows, you know, they make office they make boring business people stuff are, are they making a pc that just has a console or like a controller port you can plug into or what and actually that's kind of what it ended up being even though they kept saying to the contrary up to the point when microsoft came to the consumer electronics show that year uh, the year that we all expected to really get our you know, first look at the xbox and what it was going to do and what it was going to be up to that point it had all been rumor and speculation of course and then we had heard rumors going into that thing that they were going to have the rock there and it was like, what is The Rock going to do with the Xbox? So it was kind of a big question mark. It wasn't until The Rock walked out that I knew that the Xbox was going to be something special. He's like, yeah, you know, Xbox, right on. So I don't know. That whole thing just kind of seemed set up and, and weird. But at the same time, it, was, it definitely felt different. It felt different than anything we'd seen Sony do at that point. It felt different, obviously, than anything we'd seen Nintendo do at that point. Well, not a whole lot of information given right up front, but they did kind of show kind of what they were all about, you know, did the whole tech demo thing, and that stuff looked sharp at the time, so it was kind of uh, easy to start to get excited about the system right then. The, the first real concrete memories I have about the Xbox was being at that year's uh, Game Developers Conference in San Jose when uh, they were kind of unveiling the whole idea and the whole thing to uh, game developers. And they take the wraps off this thing, it's just this giant silver box, and I'm like, that's not really going to be what I'm putting in my living room, is it? I remember seeing at E3, when the year that they announced the Xbox, they had a, um, a prototype, and it was actually shaped like an X. And I remember that the, we knew that it wasn't the real deal because they said the disk drive couldn't even fit on it because it was shaped like an X. But there was still this incredible line all around E3 of people just... I guess amazed and wondering like what what the deal was with the Xbox and so they just wanted to see this ridiculous fake version of it. You know right before the launch of the Xbox you know we had publishers in with Xbox debug units showing off their games and it was you know these were the launch games these were like the first batch of games coming out for the Xbox and you know we both kind of had the same questions for each other at some point they would ask me you know so what do you think about this thing? I mean, you know, not just our game, but I mean, what have you been, been seeing on it? And, and at the same time, I had the question, I was like, so what do you guys think about making games for this thing? And, and the thing I kept hearing was like, you know, we have to be there at launch because obviously they've built up enough hype to where they're going to sell a lot of Xboxes right at launch. But as far as past that, we're not so sure. So everyone was still kind of taking a wait and see approach with the Xbox, even after it had already come out. Just in physical terms, obviously, the Xbox is a pretty imposing presence. You know, it's several times bigger than a GameCube or a PS2, probably. The thing weighs a ton. You know, it's just this giant black kind of monolith. My reaction when I first saw the, the, the Xbox was, that is an American console, damn it, because it's big, it's clunky, and it's angry. I, actually, the size of the system didn't bother me. Like, not the size of it, but the, I did think it was damn ugly. There was this part in the manual that said something about um, caution it might hurt a child if it falls on it. I think that was sort of the metaphor for the Xbox, was the danger it might fall and kill your child. I was also really irritated about the original controller design. It was like they took the Dreamcast controller and then made it just vastly inferior. You know, Microsoft is an American company that's developing an American game console. It's got this American-sized controller. Uh, I didn't like the buttons. I didn't like the way I felt my hands. I didn't like the analog sticks. So they did kind of quickly release that smaller Japanese style S controller. To me, you know, the, the broadband only thing for the Xbox seemed a little crazy at the time. I mean, I think it was the right move, but I think it also kind of alienated a lot of people. It let Microsoft kind of just like narrow their focus on getting that kind of broadband market. It might have been a year or two earlier for something like that if they really wanted to get the most number of people to, to be playing their games online, but then there weren't really any Xbox Live games at all for the whole first year of the system's life. I thought it was genius that they included a hard drive. I mean, that, you know, that was just something consoles didn't do up to that point. And you just look at Xbox games compared with, you know, any, like, any multi-platform game on Xbox compared with PS2 or GameCube. It's just like, load times are always faster, you know, the saves are always, there's more save room on the hard drive. It's just a brilliant thing. Another instance I remember is before the Xbox was out, um, 
you know, Microsoft brought Halo by. You know, we're, we're pretty skeptical guys and we play games on all platforms. So if you show up in the office and say, check out this first person shooter, it's not immediate cause for us to like go, ah, and start tearing our hair out. When I saw my friends playing Halo and, you know, I saw videos of people jumping the warthog and stuff, I really started to, uh, to see what, where this was going and that it was going to be pretty big after the fact, you know, word kind of got back to me through, you know, higher ups here that, that he was not amused, that we were not freaking out because he felt that he was showing us the, the revolution in gaming, you know, the, the greatest game ever made with Halo. I love the, the setting of that game. I love the, just the, the feel of it. It was definitely kind of a weird disconnect in, in kind of the expectations that Microsoft initially had about their games and kind of what the reality was. It was a sci-fi shooter that was fun and funny and a lot of, a lot of action and, and purple blood. It was great. In the end, of course, Halo turned out to be an amazing game. Um, but, you know, you show someone 10 minutes of it before it's done, it didn't automatically look like uh, the next big thing. See, so yeah, actually, the Xbox launch lineup I thought was generally pretty strong. There were a few kind of nasties in there, as there always are. I remember playing Fusion Frenzy. And I remember tr like trying so hard to like that game, and it was just bad. It was bad. It, every time you saw Fusion Frenzy, be it you know at Microsoft's GameStock event for for the press, or you know right before it came out, it was like every step of the way there was someone affiliated with Microsoft saying, you know, this is Bill Gates' favorite game for the Xbox. But yeah, I'll, I'll admit it, Fusion Frenzy. That was where it was at. It was like me and three of my friends running through that thing. It was like kind of a cute version of The Running Man, so I'm into that kind of. It was like, you know, well, we got Lorne Lanning to make this Oddworld game for us exclusively, or, you know, this driving game, you know, Project Gotham is going to, you know, blow away anything you saw on the Dreamcast with the, the MSR series, or, you know, Halo is the, the next big thing in gaming, and Fusion Frenzy, well, that's Bill Gates' favorite Xbox game. It was just weird. Games that came out in the first year of the Xbox, um, actually the one that I probably remember most fondly would actually be Splinter Cell. Seeing Sam Fisher look all crazy realistic, you know, creeping all over the shadows and stuff like that, coming up and jacking people. No, that game definitely looked pretty cool. Because of the whole light component and staying in the shadows, that game really built itself on the graphics, which was the perfect thing to accentuate the Xbox for me. And I think that Splinter Cell was really the, the game that, that sold me on the Xbox for, for real. Some of my first thoughts when I first heard about Xbox Live was that they were going to have a hard time convincing people to pay a subscription to be on it. I don't like paying for stuff. I had my PlayStation 2 sitting there. I'm pretty sure at that point, yeah, I had a broadband adapter for it. So me not having to pay for online games, then all of a sudden having to pay for online games, kind of a crazy concept. When I actually saw the service and saw what it could do and just sort of like the way it was kind of standardized across all games, I realized, wait, no, this, this is the way to do it. Okay, so the Xbox Live games that I've played the most are racing games, I think. There's uh, Project Gotham Racing 2, uh, MotoGP 2. ESPN, NFL football. For me, that was where I was at. It was like football online on the Xbox. With that, I was done. I think Xbox Live definitely gives the Xbox an edge where multi-platform games are concerned. It kind of gives you this designated feature set. Like, it's just a checklist that developers can go down and say, all right, we have this, 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 and this imp implemented. You know, it's all there for you. Yeah, I've definitely bought Xbox games, not because they have better graphics, but just purely because I can play them online. You know, the sad thing about Xbox Live was for so long, you know, there was just a business deal or whatever it was holding up the fact that I couldn't play um, my EA sports games on Xbox Live. I think EA didn't want to give up any measure of control. They were one of the only companies that held out and held out, just like not releasing their games with decent online stuff. Do you know the, the drama that, that ensued when Fight Night came out <laughs> and, I, and I couldn't play that game online on the Xbox? You know, it worked fine on the PS2. It was what it was. You know, I'm crazy. I want to be able to play both versions online and, you know. Then they said, oh, well, you know, people are actually playing games on the Xbox now. Maybe we should, you know, get in on this. But then they just like, you know, they decided that, oh, but we're going to keep these lobby systems that we had and we're going to keep doing the same kind of EA Sports Locker and the matchmaking and all that stuff. Burnout 3 is like the one that we'll all, like, I'll always remember because it was like, that was a game that everybody was really stoked to be playing online. And they took Xbox Live and they just messed it up. They tried to put too much of their own spin on it and it just didn't work so well. Like the friends list didn't work properly. Like it was impossible to get into games without like long wait times. 
I think it even had like an outdated kind of lobby system, right? It was, it was just nasty. Just use the interface. Just give, all I want is a create a match, opt a match, friends list. That's all I need. Give me downloadable content on top of that? Great, fantastic. I don't need any of this other stuff. Halo 2, Xbox Live, you know, what they did with the whole crazy player matching thing, so you're always in a game with, you know, competitive people that aren't either gonna destroy you or be too easy for you. That was pretty cool. I've barely touched the single player game, but I've I played it quite a lot online for like maybe a couple of months, so I was pretty much obsessed with it. Uh, I don't know why it's so huge. Well, maybe you heard of a little game called Halo. Halo 2, the sequel. Halo sold like a billion copies. So Halo 2, probably gonna sell at least a few, right? I'm not playing Halo 2 on Xbox Live. I don't know the whole thing with Halo 2, you know? I, I played Halo 1, I liked it. It was a first person shooter, you know? That was kind of my take on it. Halo 2's boring, I think it's odd. and there's no heart in Halo. I think most of the people who play it, I mean, surely a lot of these guys have access to PCs, right? And first-person shooters on PC are generally way better. Halo 2's multiplayer is undeniably awesome, but at the same time, most of the people playing Halo 2 online are jackasses, and I really don't want to deal with that. And, you know, so after that, you're left with a 10-hour single-player experience that is pretty good, but man, does that game end horribly. Xbox Live is kind of known for the... Uh the pre-adolescent kind of trash-talking little kids. Well, they don't like my mother, you know? They have real problems with Mrs. Eckberg a lot. Especially when I win races, my mom just gets, they just cuss at my mom, and my mom's nice. People who sing on Xbox Live are the most irritating people on Earth. But you do have to wade through a lot of crap on Xbox Live. Dude, man, you're so gay, you're so gay. Oh, you're a girl? Dude, you're so hot. Oh my god, you're so hot. Talk to me, baby. Go on. And then I mute them. <laughs>